So, my lady, tell us a, b- a little bit more about um, your Pan African traders. What is it about? What is it? Okay. What's it looking um, to? So, when I when I originally moved back to Nigeria, mm. um, I had so many different ideas that I just wanted to try out. Um, I believe in just failing quickly, learning, and then mm. improving on it. So, um, one of them was like building an an Alibaba for Africa, right? So, like, uh, international trade marketplace yeah, yeah, yeah. I of this based in Africa. Yeah. Intra-Africa trade. Um, but one thing that I learned um, pretty quickly was that we're not ready for that. No. Nah, because, nah. first of all, we don't even have enough exporters to warrant a marketplace. Because in marketplace, yeah. buyers and sellers. If you mm. don't have enough sellers, then it's not really a marketplace. So, Do you think we have a selling problem or a buying problem? That's interesting. Yeah, you don't, we don't have enough exporters. Yeah, we we don't have enough. Well, we don't have enough good quality, well vetted. Exactly, exporters. that's what I was to say. The quality, yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's people that are doing small stuff. Like even I export a little bit here and there, but like in terms of large scale, yeah, you have Alam, which is a big multinational, and you know they do sesame seed and all that. But mm. like compared to like other countries, like mm. you know you hear like Peter will be like giving all these stats about how Nigeria like. You know, we export worth 30 billion and then Vietnam is like 200 billion or something mm. crazy like that. It's because we just don't, we don't produce enough. To us, it seems like a lot because we're here and like, oh my God, like this guy's moving 10 containers this mm. month. But like on the international stage, like it's nothing. It's- nah. So so basically, do you think the international world would, would kind of buy our goods if we do more exporting? Yeah, but we, it, but we'd have to make our stuff well prepared. We have exactly. to package it, right? We have to mm-hmm. do the Sanitary right due standards. diligence. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Food safety. Yeah, I've heard that, that Ghanaian stuff. goods are favoured over Nigerians. We don't meet the sanitary yeah. standards. There's an agreement between Africa and the US where duty you can get free duty-free goods. What's that thing called? Yeah, uh, AGOA. AGOA, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. with AGOA, we could have taken a lot of advantage o- over that. Okay. But apparently Ghana seems to be doing better than us because mm. Nigerian sanitary standards mm-hmm. and quality of our things mm-hmm. that we produce mm-hmm. to export, mm-hmm. apparently it's not up to standard. And, and yeah. our logistics as well. Like mm. the cost of sending goods out of Nigeria is way more than like... Ghana, Togo, all these other mm. countries. Why oh, is wow. that though? Because um, the many the reasons, reason. like sometimes is some people, call, one of my friends calls it illegal, illegal taxes. So it's like, you know, like on the way there, the <laughs> guy that stops your Christian truck on the <laughs> way, yeah, yeah, yeah. like collecting money here and there. And then like, the lubricant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like at the end, when it gets to the port and then there's delays at the port as well. Mm. So, and a papa port is just way too congested. So is there so many reasons why it, exporting so even me like i export a little bit mm. and the last time i exported by sea i did it through ghana oh nice because so it's just send so to ghana even first. even it's sending it from nigeria to ghana well, and exporting problem. was still cheaper oh wow then sending from nigeria export. from nigeria wow so these are like we've got so many like bottlenecks with the export so that's why i realized and i was like look i need to create businesses that make exporting easier mm. before we get to that stage of just having a marketplace we need to have like we need to financing we need better logistics mm. we need, so these are the so pan-african traders has changed from like an online marketplace to a series of technologies that that supports help. that yeah that's, that. that's good that. yeah. No, and talk about that like oh, but the actual like importing exporting work that you do mm-hmm. how have you found that um okay so it's it's interesting because how i started was because i was still in the uk and I was um, bringing in some food from Nigeria called Fonio, which is what I export. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started doing a very small scale, you know, 50 kilograms, 100 kilograms here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then because of my experience, I started understanding the challenges that other people were having. And so that's why I started creating other solutions. So one of the biggest challenges that I found is that people are trying to export smaller amounts of goods. And so... If you don't have like um, enough money to pay for a full container, mm. like it's, it's quite expensive. expensive. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Like, how much is a full container? It could be anything for four thousand, five thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. It depends on like time of year and all these kinds of things. Mm. But um, yeah, so basically what I did was, you know, I started this company called Kadan Kadan, which is this is the first company on the Pan African trade. I remember that's when he gave me his business card on Kadan Kadan. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that one is all about groupage so basically people sharing containers so you know how you have like uber pool mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um to share taxis is like sharing containers so um and what's and the, the infrastructure for that is it an app a website it, like how do i yeah so it's an app um we haven't launched the app yet but we're doing the groupage service at the moment but the okay, app is nice. coming soon yeah mm-hmm. because i got some um feedback from a mentor of mine who was saying like look just do lean just build it 
do it manually and then once you know how the flow works build yeah, it people out. say that actually well, a, yeah. lot of, a lot of feedback at startup stages to not do the big thing straight away yeah mm. is to just learn start, as you go yeah. along just yeah. start something yeah so um yeah so we're just we're just doing it on a small scale we got people that are early stage exporters to share the container and like you said it's just we're just the the bridge so we're not like a logistics company mm -hmm. so each country that we're working with we have like uh, logistics specialists mm -hmm. so they handle all the back end mm. all the documentation all the hard work mm -hmm. we're just literally just connecting people like okay say you want to put like 500 kilograms you want to mm. put one ton mm -hmm. i want to put five tons we all come together so that's what our app does oh just yeah just the manage people. yeah and then yeah, in the no, back yeah. end we have the logistics providers who facilitate all the hard oh, like, so you're just the integrator work. that's interesting yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, know, yeah um yeah integrator that's what it is yeah. So you have the Pan-African podcast. Like, I've listened to a couple of episodes. I really enjoyed it. You were talking about, one guy was talking about exporting like hibiscus, ginger. Mm -hmm. You had another girl talking about exporting um, cannabis mm -hmm. as well. So what's what inspires you to start the podcast mm -hmm. and how's that going? Um, for me, I'm, I'm big on economics. I'm big on... Um, so one of the... Uh, intellectuals that I follow the most in the US is called Claude Anderson, Dr. Claude Anderson. He wrote mm -hmm. a book called Powernomics. And okay. it talks about how um, for black America to be liberated, they need to practice group economics. Mm -hmm. Facts. So Facts, like, yeah. you know, money circulating the same, yeah. within your community. Mm -hmm. So I just extrapolate that and put out on an African scale, right? Rather than within a black community on an intra-Africa scale. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that, you know, if we want to grow African industry and employment and all that, we need to boost trade within Africa. And so that's kind of been my thing since I moved back, just trying to either educate people about, right. you know, intra-Africa trade or right. promoting intra-Africa right. trade or anything to boost trade within Africa. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been my shtick since I moved back. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's when the pod, that's how the podcast kind of started. It started off in like Clubhouse. I would talk to people yeah. and I met some really intelligent people that are doing big things. Mm -hmm. nice. And then I was just like, look, People need this information. Mm. People want to yeah. learn how to export. People want to learn Facts. what it takes to get into whatever industry. Mm -hmm. So why not just educate people about it? Because you know what put me off, yeah? So I had like a close family member like, yo, if you need things from America, like I'll send it. We can do this import exporting thing. But what has put me off is the damn lubricant. <laughs> I ain't got time to be. They keep asking you for lube, right? I ain't got time to be bribing no customs officer and to be selling. I just don't have the energy. Like you don't have to pick your battles in this Lagos. Mm, yeah. I don't have the time for them to come and tell me. Do you know how many times I've been on Instagram and see women crying, saying, "Ah, oh, it's too hard." Or imagine I had these goods for this and long, they're and they're mm. asking for this money. The prices you're killing my business. Mm. So how have you navigated? Do you need to have an in, like inside person, honestly? To... Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like I think a lot of things in Nigeria is like you get better contacts the longer you're in the system. So like I can give like mm, NAFDAQ facts. as an example. Like when I first started doing my NAFDAQ process, mm. yeah, you walk into the NAFDAQ office and you meet the first person you see and that's your guy. <laughs> but then, you know, that's your guy, right? And he has to work with him until where he stops, him. his power stops exactly. as well. I can't wait his power stops, that's so true. <laughs> and, then you, and then you start networking, meet other people and you're like, oh, by the way, I know the director general of blah, blah, blah. And you get his number and then things move way faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the same thing with imports and export is like, the longer you're in the system, the better the contacts you make. You mm -hmm. get better freight forwarders, better customs people. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, you just got to be patient, but you're going to yeah. lose money along the way. Live but, and learn. <sighs> live that's why I can't, live and learn. that's why I can't, like, yeah. that's why I can't deal but you with. Got, but you got to meet people who've been through that, that you can just skip that. That's what I'm saying. That's why network is important because sometimes you might meet someone that's- It's the only thing that. that's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like- Going through of, that again, boy, is long. That's what, like, imagine people coming to Nigeria and they're going through the whole process All again. Of it. Yeah. The things I've heard, yeah, I've, even for NAFTAC registration, it's going into millions of naira for, per product. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you don't do yeah, it right. Somebody, somebody said that to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah, said yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. and it's not it's the lubricant that makes yeah, yeah. it that way. It's not the actual price That's of the yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. It's the lubricant that runs each product. Because Naftak is, I didn't know it's per product. It's not by the brand. Yeah. yeah. So you need to get Naftak registration. If you've got eight products, you need it for each of your products. Each of the product, They'll yeah. rinse you out. Don't yeah. don't get me started on Naftak. <laughs> because Just no, because us. the one thing that annoys me is that like in the UK, if I want to start selling a chocolate brand, mm. I just go into my kitchen. And, make and I make chocolate. 
and I buy the packaging and I put it on the chocolate and, mm. and, and that's it. Like maybe I might get someone from the council to get health to and check, safety. Yeah, yeah, check my facility. Certificate, yeah. But, but I don't need to like build anything. It just come to my kitchen and they're like, say for example, I was doing like um, markets in the UK and the, just, the p- lady from the council came. She was like, okay, make sure that the stuff for your personal use is in this box and the stuff for your business is in that box. Nigeria, like... I have to build a factory. Mm, for oh, them to, really? Yeah. yeah. For them like, to actually... you, you can't, like, so you have to have your production room, your packaging room, your filling room. You've got to build the whole factory. And, then, and you think why we don't export more and why we're in the situation we're in when they're making it so hard for people to even get into that business. <laughs> this, this environment, you taught me the word, it's a disabling environment. It's, disabling it's environment. disabling. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Like, in, like, luckily, like, I come from a, let's put it in quotes like privileged background mm-hmm, right so mm-hmm. i can i can do that but like mm-hmm. imagine like someone that's just literally she's just even if to... you come from a privileged background we're all young we all move back in our 20s yeah. we're all trying to build ourselves up like if yeah, i'm paying millions of naira per product i don't even want to get started no it's, for it's, me it put me off I was, I was trying to come and build some you know products yeah going on my holistic health <laughs> natural mosquito bite remedy <laughs> that didn't work what happened <laughs> <laughs> By the time it was that someone was telling me millions of naira for NAFTAC, I'm like, is that actually okay? You know, no, that's why I love really? these people. That's why I love these people have products about NAFTAC registration. Yeah, yeah. Because but I'll I'll give like a sh- quick shout out. There's something called the Technology Incubation Hub, which is basically like um, we have one in Lagos, Botako, mm. Jos, different um, cities in Nigeria, and basically it's like the government where they build the NAFTAC approved facilities, and you yeah. just come in and Ooh. just lease it and then use it to do your stuff and then that is interesting yeah 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 so, hopefully they can maintain it over time yeah mm. yeah it's, it's good like but not everybody knows about these things no, like this no, so exactly. how, why do you how do people get to know more about this kind not of thing your network yeah. your gone, network mm. uh, your network is so important because yeah. if you when you come as back as well if you have any services it's your network that's going to remember oh okay you're selling this. Oh, okay. Mm. I know someone that has this. So it's, it's mm-hmm. your network that will tell you these opportunities. Because mm. even online, Africans, one thing I've learned, Africans don't maintain information online. No. No. Look at any no. government website or look no. at any company. They don't do news releases like we do. No. No. Even the news, most of their news is maybe like on Twitter or Instagram. They don't actually have dedicated websites that much for news. Mm. So you have to hear about these things through the grapevine. grapevine yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. So I know the, someone. Like what have you, 